I'm Dave Banks, we're at Beer Brand HQ and we're cutting Carlos's hair today. Hey. You want to get a little bit of the, rid of the blonde, don't you? Well, yes, if, if possible, but I don't yeah. want to ruin the haircut just for the sake of getting rid of it. Yeah. But if, you, if, you, if it's possible to get rid of some of it, or I, I know they're probably not all of it, but some of it's fine. If all, great. Yeah, I think it would, that would be a gradual process, to be honest. We'd have to yeah, be really yeah. short to take all that out. Yeah, so I, I'm not too fussed about that. But this length, it's sitting really nice through this one side. You can kind of see it overlapping yeah, yeah, yeah. and layering. So I'm just detangling the hair. I've got it sitting really nice now, kind of in the shape it's going to stay. And we're going to keep this shape. We're going to graduate from the front to the back. Take a little bit out of the crown because the crown's going to stand real high otherwise. And we don't want that. I, th I feel like I'm really short or this chair doesn't go down as low as I... I think it goes low, right? I think I need yellow pages or something. No, I think that's it, dude. That's as low as it goes. I'm really am feeling short at the moment. Well, you are short. Yeah, <laughs> I am short. <laughs> I'm so short here. Everyone's so big as well, aren't they? You're in Texas. Everything yeah. else is bigger than you. <laughs> so we're going to start with the back. We're going to work this crown out. Take a diagonal section. And I'm just going to club cut some of that blonde. Dude, was this the colour you actually wanted to go? Or was no, this no, a... no. I had silver, but okay. you know, you have to go blonde to get silver in. Yeah. So, I did add, add a blonde for a little while because I couldn't be bothered to go back and get it dyed silver. I just thought I'd just leave it. So, this blonde's almost working like a guy for me at the moment, which is good. Uh, sometimes when you're cutting black hair, it's hard to see your guy lines uh, just because it kind of disguises itself. But we can see exactly what's going on here. We take a section, cross the head, and I'm going to separate the fringe to start with. Because the fringe is going to, we're going to use that for height. And I'm going to cut backwards first. So we're going to leave the fringe out of the equation. And we're going to pull up. And again, we're going to use to take, get rid of some of this blonde. Now we don't want to take too much out of this side. Because that's where we'll lose the volume and the height. Dave, you're making me sleepy, man. I'm making myself sleepy. It's not the talking, it's I've just got, I've got you like, like dulcet tone, haven't I? It's like giving me a head massage, mate. Oh, well, it's not the voice? No. Oh, I thought I had a bit of a Morgan Freeman voice then. Uh, I'm well, Morgan Freeman. Not quite there. I don't think anyone will ever narrate as good <laughs> as Morgan Freeman. He can narrate to anything, mate. He could, yeah. So, yeah, I'm making a point of trying to get rid of as much of the blonde as possible without compromising the style. It's hard being a barber, you know. You've got to take in everything into consideration. People want the impossible. Carlos wants a short, he wants a non-short haircut with all the blonde gone. It's pretty much what he wanted, wasn't it? Well, yes, you're, you're yes really and strict. no. Yeah. But I know it's not possible. I would like it, but I know it's not possible. Yeah. No, it's looking better. I don't think I'm one of them people that go to a barber shop and show a picture. I want that exactly that, and I'm what? like bald, and this guy's got <laughs> perm on or something. I like want that. like David Beckham. You know what I mean? Hey, I had the best one recently, right? A guy came into the shop, and he sat down with one of the other barbers, and he said, uh, "I want my beard like this." And we thought he was pulling out a phone, and he pulled out a piece of paper that he'd drawn a beard on. <laughs> He'd drawn a beard. <laughs> He'd hand drawn a beard. <laughs> on what? A picture of it? It was like a pattern. He'd drawn like a pattern, like the sides were all shaved out. It had like a swirl here. No, it wasn't a face on it. It was just a beard. Oh my God. He like freehand designed it. It was pretty cool, to be honest. 10 out of 10 for creativity. Wow. But yeah, that was unique, mate. We really, we enjoyed that. Did you do it? Uh, I didn't do it. One of the other barbers did. He did a really good job on it as well. They but did? Yeah. It was, uh, it was unique. I've never seen anybody do that. Okay, so we've got the fringe here now. 
It's slightly longer as it comes over, and we've got a hangover here, so it's almost undercut, as you can see. So we want that to lie back in layers. So I'm going to start working sideways here and join it to the back of the head without taking anything off the front of the fringe. So we're going to take another diagonal section. I'm just going to club cut. Club cut. Club cut. Just so it sits nicer. I think what I was trying to say earlier was a lot of time people give the same haircut to each client, to every client. They don't tailor the haircut to specific shapes. They'll just follow a set routine, kind of go through the, through the motions with the haircut. But sometimes it's better to come off piece a little bit and, and make stuff fit. So I'm still going to work, I worked to this side of the head and I've come around about halfway. And now I'm going to start taking all the way to the back and connecting in diagonal sections with palm to face. I heard a guy said that he waited at Franklin's barbecue. Three hours, wait three hours? Dude, I stayed in the apartment uh, right next to it. Yeah. And I remember, I, 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 it was maybe the first time Jenna came with me to Austin. I can't remember. Anyway, I remember looking down and seeing this massive line of people. I was like, what the hell? And then I was asking questions, it's just like people waiting to go and eat the barbecue. And they're there like from f like 5 in the morning. 5 a.m., yeah. That's what this guy was telling me. The first guy was there at 5 a.m. They don't open till 11. So he was just waiting. Man, and not everyone's going to eat it either because they get us, they run out. They run out as well? Yeah. You'd be fine because they only allow, the, like, I think they said like it's about two pounds of meat per person. Okay. But obviously they don't think everyone's going to eat two pounds two of pounds, meat. Two pounds, yeah. But they underestimated you. <laughs> okay, my saw I conquered. So through the bottom here, I am going to machine around the edge just to flick out and get a yeah. nice finish there. Yeah, I want the the neck clean. Yeah, but I'm still going to just use palm to face, just to take off the majority of the bulk. I can't play for stock anymore, dude. I've had a high, a high sprain. Uh, the last game I played was about three months ago. And it's, my foot's just not been right since. My whole ankle's been really sore. Yeah, things don't need less fast either. No. Yeah. I've been lucky. I've been quite lucky throughout the years not get major injuries. You know, I never broke a bone. Nothing like that. I think some people are lucky and some people are accident. I'm, I'm definitely accident prone. I do go home, like after, uh, like when I play in England, I play league, Sunday league, right? Yeah. And I do go home after, man. Sometimes I struggle to walk a little bit in the first, first day, yeah. the next day. And shit, loads of bruises and cuts. Yeah, it's, um, oh, do you know I broke my collarbone? Just running. No one was around me. <laughs> it, was, it was the most embarrassing thing ever. And the whole game had to stop and had to be stretched off. Yeah, yeah that was not a fun time for me, man. You should play with a, with a tag saying, fragile, yeah, yeah, fragile. <laughs> handle with care. Yeah, do not tackle me. <laughs> oh, mate, it was even worse that no one was around me because it kind of just dropped. Oh, man. So we're using a static blade. We're not chomping at the hair. It's 
So we're looking here to keep almost like a, a line of weight. It's got to be nicely blended, but we don't want it to kind of be up and down here because this really defines the haircut, the parting. It's a little bit thick over the ears still. Yeah, you probably can take a bit more around the ears if you want. Mm. You can take it short a bit. Yeah, we'll get a nice graduation there. Okay, so we're using the round brush and we're just gonna start finding where this haircut's gonna sit nice on top now. Uh, I've put the blueprint in by the work we've done around the sides and the edges, but I'm aware that Carlos wants to keep some volume. So I'm gonna try and work the volume in now. The sea spray is kind of, it's the sea spray is holding quite nicely now and it's starting to kind of cement as I, as I dry the hair. So I'm using the round brush kind of put that kink in the hair because that's going to create volume and then we're going to try and trim out just a little bit more of the blonde on top and then we'll start working on tapering the edges okay so just to thin out a little bit of this color we're going to use a 20% thinner we're going to use the tooth of the blade and we're just going to take just the very edges so we're not root thinning. We're just going to thin the tips and it should soften up. Because it's very blocky at the moment. It's kind of a block, a block colour. Yeah, that's having the desired effect. So I'm now just looking, I can see it thinning out slightly, and I'm just looking for spots where it's a little bit thicker, and then I can just use just the teeth on the scissor just to take out that little bit of block, block color. Okay, so we've got a number two guard on the clipper. The blade is gonna be closed, and I'm gonna just start tapering out here. We're not going down to a zero, We're going to take it down to like a point, point 0.5 at the very edge. It needs to be a natural transition. I'm going to take in just here with a 1.75. Just to add a bit of shape. The hair's quite long through there. I'm going to tie you around the ear with a, with a clipper and a comb. So using the corner of the clipper here, it gives you kind of an edge, makes the clipper agile, but then removing the bulk, you want to use the bottom blade of the clipper. Uh, the, the skin is very sensitive around the ears, it's very easy to kind of cag it or catch it with a, a blade. Done that. Second. Old money, we're gonna go for that one. Okay, I took a small amount of styling balm. Scent's really nice. I'm gonna apply it. I'm going to rub it to my fingers and we're going to apply it to the hair. So we want to get this kind of to the root. We don't want it just to sit on the surface. Okay, 
and you're, you're almost like kneading it in. So you want this to sit through here. So you see the, the texture and you can almost make a bit of a pattern in with your fingers and it'll give it a nice finish where it looks like it's been styled and not just blow dried and left to set. Okay, happy with that? <laughs>